welcome to the very first How to Be a Money Magpie podcast. I'm Jasmine Bertels, money expert and founder of moneymagpie.com, and I'm joined by Annie Thorpe, who's our content editor, and also our producer, John Offord. This is, as I say, the very first episode of our new podcast series, and we want you to get to know what it really means to be a money magpie and how to become one yourself. And that's why we've launched this podcast, where we're going to be talking about the hottest money topics of the day and, of course, keeping you up to date on the latest ways to manage your money. It's not just about us, though. Uh, We want to hear about your experiences, your personal finance stories and your hottest tips. So that's why we'll be sharing the tweet of the week. Um, Reader questions will definitely feature heavily. So make sure that you post your burning questions on the podcast thread on our forum. And that, by the way, is Annie Thorpe. Annie, have you got any plans to go on holiday? <laughs> Definitely not. I'm de- I'm going to avoid any form of travel until at least 2021. Yeah, it does feel like that at the moment. I mean, I'm very keen to make the most of some of these amazing deals that are out there. But each time I think, oh, I can go wherever. Then there's the worry of, oh, is it going to be shut down? Is it going? Am I going to have to quarantine? Ugh. And and I think this is the way a lot of people are are thinking. So as holidaying becomes almost more of a chore than simply staying at home and doing nothing in this really rather nice weather. We have the expert of all travel experts with us on this first podcast. It's uh, my friend and a travel expert, the amazing Simon Calder from uh, the, his travel editor of The Independent. Hello, Simon. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, it's so nice to be here. I'm actually at uh, St Pancras Station because um, as we are putting the podcast together, uh, the government has suddenly said, um, right, uh, we are putting... Belgium on the naughty list and of course this is the railway station in central London for uh, people who are heading to um, uh, Brussels and indeed beyond to and to, uh, to Amsterdam or maybe changing trains for uh, Germany and uh, of course there's talk that France might also uh, join that list so huge amounts of uncertainty so uh, yes I, I absolutely understandable that Annie might be thinking well I don't want to commit to anywhere but of course that's I would say uh, you know, a, a, a rational decision um, uh, in, in pure financial and logistical terms, but you've got to bear in mind, of course, the um, benefits that travelling brings to us, not and also to uh, the wider travel industry. <laughs> well, very good point. I mean, th- this this must be an absolute nightmare of nightmare of all nightmares, really, for for the travel industry, because just when you think, oh, it's all going to get better now suddenly the, the rug's pulled from under them. I mean, do, do you think we're already hearing about Virgin um, filing for bankruptcy? Um, surely th- we're going to have many more after this. Yeah, and just just on the subject of uh, Virgin, because I know that lots of listeners have um, forward bookings or maybe they're waiting for refunds from um, uh, Virgin Atlantic. Um, the crucial word, which if I may, Jasmine, I'm afraid you just missed out, but that was because largely all the media did too, they filed for bankruptcy protection. Um, and that means it's a purely, it's a sort of technical thing um, within uh, the US uh, bankruptcy code. Basically, it just says, look, we're sorting ourselves all out in the UK. Um, while we're doing that, we don't want any kind of court cases against us, people trying to retrieve money in the US. So please, will you um, uh, allow us to file for bankruptcy protection? So a technical measure, but of course, everybody hears bankruptcy and Virgin Atlantic and quite understandably, um, uh, they, they get very concerned. Yeah, this this is the thing. And and it's like so many aspects of, of business and investing. It, it's all about confidence or lack of confidence. So this is, I think, is the, the problem. I mean, I'm sure you're getting loads of questions from all your readers and your viewers with people going, you know, asking that that question that nobody can answer. Oh, should I go on holiday in two weeks time? Should I go... I mean, what's what's the main piece of advice that you're going to giving to people who have holidays booked maybe next month? If you've got a holiday book, all you can do is keep your fingers crossed. And it's awful that um, what should be wonderful anticipation at this time of year has turned into a sense of anxiety, of stress, of, of possibly even dread that your holiday will be going ahead. That's exactly not how it should be. But of course, um, the deeper we get into August, the more people are going to be worrying about well, yeah, will I be able to get back in time? Will the family get back in time for people to uh, uh, still get to school if suddenly there's a quarantine rule? Um, lots of uncertainty. What I'm doing with new bookings, and I'm traveling as much as I possibly can, 
It's just booking the day before. And yeah, sometimes you'll pay more. Very often you'll pay less. Um, and and um, it's just, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to be exposed to too much risk, as I'm sure none of your listeners do. And a good way to do that is just book late. But the travel industry will not thank me remotely for saying that because, of course, they want people, they want money coming in the door as soon as possible. All this uncertainty, which really kind of, began with the sudden imposition on the 25th of July of quarantine for Spain. Um, that's uh, just completely destroying confidence, and it's an awful time. Well, exactly, because Spain and France, those those are the two most popular destinations, I think, for, for UK travellers. And so already, I'm, I, I know of people who are already in France right now, and they must be thinking to themselves, oh, heck, what, what am I going to do? Should I come back early or should I just wait it out? And, and if I wait it out, will I then have to quarantine when I, I didn't even know that that was going to happen before? What are you saying to people who are at the moment? out in France well uh, yes or indeed people are about to go and I'm sure about whether they should go well I'm just guided by the warning that we got if you're from England as opposed to Wales and, and Wales England Scotland or Northern Ireland you were given 30 hours to come back and set foot um, in your home country now that was for Belgium um, and I think if we can assume the same announce the same, same length of time vast majority of people will be able to get back if they need to in that time. I mean, it's going to be an almighty rush. It sounds, you know, uh, half a million people all trying quickly to get back is going to be um, uh, quite unseemly, but I think that could work. So I'm saying go ahead with your trip. Indeed, I'm heading off to France um, very shortly and I'm looking forward to it very much indeed, but I'm going to keep my um, timetable very close to hand so that if I uh, need suddenly to get out by, by rail, by air, by ferry, I can do that um, so that I avoid quarantine. But there are no guarantees. That's the big problem at the moment. Yeah, I guess it's it's a, basically it's a new way of of looking at holidays now. It's it's not that you you quietly book your your annual summer holiday uh, at Christmas. It is really last minute, and you have to accept that that potentially all sorts of things could happen while you're there and and on your way back. Very much so, and that's just the awful position that so many people find themselves in. Um, it's. Uh, uh, just, just heartbreaking, and I'm sure you're getting lots of messages too. You know, we booked, did, we did the right thing. We booked our family holiday back in January. Um, we now don't know what's going to be happening. We're really upset and stressed, and we just want to cancel and get a full refund, but the travel company won't let us. Um, and uh, that's just being played out all over the place. It's very, very sad. But um, unfortunately, you know, while some companies are being really flexible, others are just saying, you know what the law law is? Um, you've signed the terms and conditions. Uh, that's it, I'm afraid. Well, exactly. And one thing that I'm hearing quite a lot of is a lack of communication because I'm, I'm getting people complaining that, you know, something they were told that they couldn't go to wherever, you know, two months ago. And they've been emailing, they've been phoning, they've been writing they've, and they've, they're hearing nothing back from the companies. So I'm guessing that, that you're you're coming across some travel companies that are communicating, but many others that are just simply not speaking to their, their customers, it seems to me. Oh, oh and, and yeah. And the finger is very definitely pointed um, from my point of view at the uh, a lot of the online travel agents now these companies can represent good value um, in normal times you know if you're just after a, a cheap and easy break then that they have some merit particularly if you're making sure that you book a package holiday but as soon as things go wrong some of them continue to do the right thing communicate with their, their customers but many of them just say we can't cope we are returning the phone lines off you booked it um, and you sort it out. And uh, it's, it's desperately shocking. And I hope that one of the long-term benefits that comes out from this is that we will appreciate much more uh, the, um, the, the personal human advice of a real life travel agent who is able to uh, tell us what's what, to keep us in, um, in, in informed and to help us make the right decisions. Um, because you know, if you've got somebody you can look in the eye, somebody you can go down the high street and see, or indeed a, a, a home worker who you can get on the phone within seconds, that's far better than dealing with somebody who's probably in some weird part of the world. I'm getting all kinds of people who are calling from uh, various parts of uh, the country to say, I'm, I can't get hold of my travel agent and I'm having a look and it's a company that's based in Northern Sweden or Greece or Switzerland or somewhere like that. And why you would book a kind of, a trip to France or, or, or Italy 
through a company in a third country I, I don't know. I, I can't see that you're getting any advantages from it. No, absolutely. I, and I mean, insurance is another one. Um, I mean, the, we get insurance, obviously, for the, the obvious reason of just keeping ourselves going and um, protecting ourselves. But a lot of insurance policies now are going, oh, no, well, when we said we'd look after you with this, we're not doing that. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm assuming you are still um, saying that it's good to have travel insurance, but but read those boring terms and conditions. Uh, no, I don't think, uh, that's not quite what I'm saying, Jasmine, and nobody ever reads travel insurance. No. Um, and so uh, I, I'm all I'm saying is that um, uh, if you, you need to be aware of your insurance position and it's not necessarily going to look particularly good. If you've got a policy that, that attaches to a holiday and you book them both in January, you're in a fairly good uh, point of view. If like a distressing number of people, you think, oh, I'll take out the insurance a couple of weeks beforehand, then it's certainly going to include, um, or, or, or almost certainly not going to include cover for things like coronavirus related cancellations, may not cover health things. But of course, almost all travel this summer is going to be uh, within Europe. And that means that your European health insurance card, you might as well take advantage of it one last time because it's going to run out at the end of, uh, of December. Um, that will get you treatment in a, um, in, in a public hospital free of charge. It won't do emergency repatriation, of course, and it won't help you if your handbag gets nicked, but it will be some use and that's the main purpose i think that most people have insurance and i'm sorry this has suddenly turned into a massive building site as well as everything else <laughs> oh well look before we before we finish let's finish on a, on a, a good note because having spoken about all this misery let's be honest there are amazing deals out there if you're willing to take the risk so you're going to france now but where would you recommend me going um, on holiday right now in terms of um, you know where I can get a good deal? Okay, well, in terms of the best deals, it's impossible to say. Some days you can get an incredibly good fare. Um, some days it's a fortune. I went over to uh, Nice um, and British Airways wanted £742 for a two-hour flight. Um, luckily, I got it on frequent flyer points, so that, that was fine. Coming back, I paid, I think, €40 Euros to Ryanair. Um, you know, the, the prices are all over the place, so booking late is not necessarily a disadvantage to go anywhere. And indeed, just within the UK, um, I, I'm traveling a lot by train. There are fantastic advanced deals around by rail at the moment. Um, so just, just make it up as you go along. Um, and in terms of locations, um, unfortunately, Northern Ireland, which would have been my top tip, um, that's sort of slightly clamping down. Uh, Greece, I think, will be the last country in the Mediterranean still standing. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Simon. I mean, <laughs> you're doing an amazing job there. And have, have a great time in St Pancras. Have a fantastic time in France and uh, speak to you when you get back. Thank you so much. Can't wait. Thank you. Bye. So that was Simon Calder talking about the travel situation that we have. Um, Annie, what's next? Well, it's uh, as nice as it is to hear from the travel experts. We like to hear from our money magpies as well, um, which is why John, our producer, has been chatting to some of the money magpie uh, community to find out what they're doing with their travel plans and how it's affecting them. Yeah, Annie, I don't know about you, but I've um, cancelled the holiday to Greece. I should be in Greece right now. So I was going to go on a walking holiday in the, in the northern mountains of Greece, but I had to cancel that at the last minute. And um, I don't feel like I'm going to go abroad at all this year. And I'm going to play it safe and stay at home. I think it's just too risky. But as you said, I, I asked a few of our money magpires to see what their thoughts were on going on a holiday this year. My name is Sam Wheatley. Uh, I live in the East Midlands, just outside of Nottingham. And I'm a film lecturer at a place called Confetti, which is part of Nottingham Trent University. Are you planning on a holiday this year? And if so, where would you like to go or where, where are you going? We were planning one and we were still planning when, when the COVID thing first started to happen because we thought, well, you know, many people, surely this won't last uh, as long as it has. But um, we like going to America and obviously the, the borders are short. And I think even if the borders were open, I, I wouldn't be confident Um traveling I, we do have a a small break booked in the first week of january at center parks but apart from other holidays no we're not we're not planning on going anywhere hi i'm sonia barlow i'm an, an award-winning entrepreneur 
TEDx speaker and diversity coach. I think everybody wants to go on holiday, but just the fact that people were in Spain and then they've said, you know, now if you're in Spain, you have a 14 day quarantine period. The elements of uncertainty are too risky and it's just not worth it. So I'm going to wait it out a couple of months and see what the environment is like. Um, But to be honest, I'm not going to risk it. Even though I know prices are super cheap and I think that's another problem is prices are so cheap right now when it comes to holidays that you do want to go out and you do want to spend. Um, My name is Reg Clegg. I work for a company called Inspire Youth Arts. We work predominantly with young people um, doing dance, digital music projects. Um, I'm also a musician and event producer and designer. Um, We did have a holiday booked uh, to go to Spain. We were going to Barcelona, Madrid and Seville. (laughs) Great, great uh, choice of location. That was booked way back last October to happen this September. So we we had to cancel that because some of the the properties um, bailed on us. Um, And because my wife's uh, recovering from a health situation, we decided it's not worth trying to go anywhere abroad um, in the coming sort of six to nine months. So we're going to have a few days away locally this year, I think. Maybe a few days in September, a few days in August, but no major holiday plans now, no. Yeah, so it looks like people are just not wanting to take that risk and they want to stay local. I know that I'm looking to hopefully do a holiday in Scotland later this year, and I'm, and I'm happy with that. How about yourself, Annie? What, what your thoughts are on that? I, uh, I only actually go on holiday every few years. I'm one of those people I prefer to. I'll save up and then I'll go away for three or four weeks at a time. Um, my, my next one, my last one was a, a road trip around Iceland, which was actually absolutely beautiful in uh, in a uh, january so it was very cold but beautiful um my next one was supposed to be um i was planning uh, a road trip across china um so wow. that one might have to go on hold for maybe more than a year um but luckily i wasn't planning on doing it until next year anyway how about you jasmine well yeah th- with this lovely weather you kind of think well why bother going anywhere frankly um i mean i'm, I'm going down to eastbourne for for three days um, around the august bank holiday um I've, I've got two rooms there are three of us going and it's 220 quid um just for the for the three nights with breakfast and you know that and and your bucket and spade and that's a nice holiday as far as I'm concerned yeah absolutely absolutely well just to say that if you want to take part and have a chat with me in the coming week get in touch with us on the on the money magpie forums I'll I'll post a thread there about the the money magpie podcast always looking to chat to people about any issue to do with personal finance so get in touch with me there and I can come and chat to you and you can feature on the next podcast Thank you, John. And that's it for today. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. It's at Money Magpie. And if you have a story, as John says, if you'd like us to feature it or you have a burning question, just head over to the podcast thread on our forum and stick it on there. And that's the thing. We've got a wide forum as well. So it's not just about the podcast. We have all sorts of topics that you can get involved with and uh, get chatting to other Money Magpires, share your stories and experience. Um, there's always someone from the Money Magpie team, usually me, um, answering some questions as well. So, And we do also invite vetted experts to have their say. So you, you'll get a good grounded experience whenever you post a question. Mm-hmm.